Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I've decided to do a three-part series, The Beginner's Guide to the Ketogenic Diet. Oftentimes I get many questions from some of my subscribers asking me, Felicia, how do I do the ketogenic diet? Where do I start? What am I supposed to buy? How do I cook the food? What am I looking for when I go shopping? What do I do on the ketogenic diet? And I can completely understand because when I first started, I was the same way. I did not have a full understanding. The previous two times I did the ketogenic diet, now I do. So this evening, I'm gonna to talk to you about what to eat on the ketogenic diet. In a separate video, I think I'm gonna talk about what not to eat, but I might touch on a little bit of it in this video as well. Now I did make up an outline so I wouldn't forget any of the things that I wanna talk about this evening because it is quite extensive. So first, let's talk about what is the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a diet that is based on high fat, moderate protein, and extremely low carbohydrates. I'm not going to worry about macros and you should keep something at 70% and keep this at 30% and keep this at 20%. I'm, I'm not even going to touch that this evening. I'm just simply going to say high fat, moderate protein, very low carbohydrates. That's all I'm going to say on that. Next, the ketogenic diet you want to make sure your blood sugar stays low. You want to make sure it stays even. You don't have those fluctuations and those spikes in your blood sugar. And number three, the ketogenic diet is basically trying to reach a state of nutritional ketosis. Now, if you do the first two steps accurate, you will automatically hit a state of nutritional ketosis. So the next question would be, what do I eat on the, on the ketogenic diet? I don't know, I'm brand new, I'm off the street, I'm here, what do I eat? What you're gonna eat is this. You're gonna eat meats. Meats include beef, pork, you can have poultry, chicken, duck, pheasant, whatever tickles your feather, no pun intended. Next, you're gonna have healthy seafoods if you want, you can have seafoods, and you can have healthy fats. Healthy fats include coconut oil, avocado oil, you can have, what is that, olive, avocado, coconut, you can have lard, you can have beef tallow, you can have lamb tallow, you can have duck fat, all excellent fats. You can have butter, no margarine, but butter. You can have these things. These things are excellent for you, good sources of fats. And lastly, you want to have non-starchy vegetables. Non-starchy vegetables are your greens, your green leafy vegetables, your lettuce. It's going to be your cauliflower, your broccoli. It's going to be, you know, uh, arugula. It's going to be all different types of vegetables that you have out there. And we're going to touch on that. Your cabbage, you're going to touch on that this weekend. Because in video two this Saturday, I'm going to take you grocery shopping with me. And we're going to look at nutritional labels as well as the ingredients. And we will touch on a portion of that this evening. If you take nothing else from this video, know this on the ketogenic diet what you're basically eating in a nutshell is fresh meat and fresh vegetables and healthy oils that's it there's nothing special it's it's not it's not it's not a hidden secret you can have fresh eggs you can have some cream some heavy whipping cream and you can have hard cheeses that's it now, with that limited amount, and I really don't want to say limited because that's a large amount of food, you can make thousands of recipes. And we're going to make some recipes. And in the third video, we're going to talk about ways of making simple meals. What I would stress to anyone starting the ketogenic diet is not only eat the meat and vegetables and healthy fats, you also want to cook those ingredients in very simple meals. Keep your meals extremely simple and you will be able to do this diet without a problem. You're gonna become a veteran in no time. You can have fried chicken, just don't use flour. Anything you fry, pork chops, chicken, whatever it is, you don't use flour. You can use a rotisserie. You can use a plethora of different things to cook your meals. But if you're not a person who's into cooking, keep everything very simple. And remember, eat at home, cook at home, and you will be successful. You go into a restaurant, you don't know what the chef put in that steak. You don't know what's in that seasoned mix that he put on that steak. It could have sugar in there for you, you know. It could have cornstarch in there. 
You don't know. You don't know what he put in it. And, I, and I'm not trying to find out. I don't know what you put in your suit. I, I go to a restaurant. I don't know where you're getting your birds from. I, I just don't know. I know what I have at home, what I purchased from the supermarket. And I'm going to cook those items. And that's what I would encourage you to do now. What I'm going to do now is show you some nutritional labels. But the most important thing on a nutritional label, get down right below that nutritional sticker are the ingredients. The ingredient says a lot. And I'm going to show you one thing. A can of corn. Can we have corn on a ketogenic diet? The answer to that is no. Corn is a high carbohydrate vegetable. So, and it's also a starchy vegetable. And it has 11 grams of carbs. And I believe it has 3 grams of fiber. So you really don't want this. But I'm going to show you that to show you this. A simple seasoning. Simple seasoning. You think, oh, floury seasoning. Well, I use floury seasoning salt. Not a problem, right? It doesn't have any carbohydrates in here. It says zero. I won't show you the label here because it's so small that my camera wouldn't probably pick it up. But the second ingredient here is sugar. And the fourth ingredient is cornstarch. You wouldn't know that until you read the ingredients. So don't just look at the nutritional label. Also look at the ingredients that's on the product. I'm going to show you some dressing. This is ranch dressing. Now ranch dressing, you say, oh, it's not bad. It only has one carbohydrate. Ah, one carbohydrate. I can have that one carbohydrate for two tablespoons. But let's not just get stuck on the nutritional label. Let's move down to the ingredients. The ingredient says it has vegetable oil, soybean, and canola oil. It has sugar, and it has da, 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 yeast, and it says it has modified food starch. So is this really an item you want to purchase just because it says it has one gram of carbohydrate? The answer to that for me is no. And I know a lot of y'all asking yourself, well, why you got all that food up in your house then if you don't buy it? Look, I too, okay, didn't read the ingredients and I'm not the only one that lives in my house. Um, I actually, a little bit about me is um, while I'm not married and I don't have any kids, I do live at home with my parents. We share a house. We all own that house together. So, um, yeah, they do not follow the ketogenic diet and they eat whatever it is that they want. So another vegetable that some people may eat and they may think is fine are sweet peas. Can you have sweet peas? No, I'm gonna tell you why. Sweet peas also have, I don't know if you can see this, 11 grams of carbohydrates, three grams of fiber. Now, the ingredients in the sweet peas, not only does it have three gram, 11 grams of carbohydrates, it has the nerve to have in the ingredients, sweet peas, water, sugar, and salt. Sugar isn't everything. So you have to be very, very careful with the items that you're purchasing from the store. When you're purchasing an item that is a packaged item, you want to make sure that item has as few ingredients as possible. Maybe three to four ingredients and no more. And I'm going to show you what I mean. This is albacore tuna. And this is Wesley Farm. This is... Um, I think this is BJ's. This is BJ's brand. I love their tuna, man. Um, this tuna has um, no carbohydrates. Uh, it has no fat. It has 13 grams of protein. But the main thing on this, if I can find it, here, ingredient says white tuna, water, and salt. White tuna, water, and salt. Three ingredients. Ingredients I can have. That's what you're looking for when you look at labels. Look for the fewest ingredients, ingredients that don't contain sugar or even hidden sugars. Let's talk about hidden sugars for a minute. What is a hidden sugar? Hidden sugar is this. Oftentimes people look at this and say, oh, Splenda, I love Splenda. Splenda tastes good, it doesn't have an aftertaste. And you're correct. And it says it's zero calories. Mm. But, is it really sugar-free? Is it really carb-free? This here says it's less than one gram of carb. Now this thing says it has zero calories, zero fat, zero sodium, less than one gram of carbohydrate, and it has protein in it. 
However, if we look at the ingredients here, it says it has maltodextrin and sucralose. Maltodextrin is a bulking agent. It's a bulking agent that is sugar and that is a carbohydrate. Now, less than one gram of carb for how much? For one teaspoon. A teaspoon is five mLs. A teaspoon is small. Most people are gonna just keep scooping the sugar in there just to have some taste. So that's one carb, two carb, three carb, four. You're adding the carbs in by adding in this Splenda. Does that mean you can't have artificial sugar? Not at all. If you wanna have artificial sugar, you can have pure stevia. And I say that loosely because you have a lot of brands out there that will lead you to believe that they're stevia and they're really not. You notice how the container is green just like your stevia would be green? Interesting, isn't it? Real stevia, if you get the organic stevia and if you look on the back of the box, it should say in the ingredients, stevia or stevia extract. That's what you're looking for. You don't want it to have maltodextrin and dextrose and all these other names. Sometimes sugars are not just as plain as they may seem because they have a, they're under a different name like maltodextrin or they might have dextrose or they may have another name entirely, but those are sugars, just the same. Sugar that you can have is liquid sucralose. Li liquid sucralose is a naturally occurring sugar and sometimes it's also produced in our own body's tissues. It is actually very sweet and it's delicious and I actually like that one. So I would try any of your sweeteners you get, I would get them in liquid form and make sure the ingredient is just that particular item in that container and that's not mixed with a blend of something else. Another couple of, um, yeah, here it is. Another couple of sweeteners you should look out for are white sugar, raw sugar, honey, molasses, um, syrups, agave nectar, maltodextrin, dextrose, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. These are sugars that you really need to watch out for because sometimes you'll buy an item and in the ingredients this is honey or it might say molasses. That is still a sugar. So if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're finding that you are stalling and you're not dropping the weight, take a look at some of the ingredients and the items that you're ingesting. You might be taking in some hidden sugars preventing you from reaching that state of ketosis. Look at some of the ingredients on the items you're consuming if you're having a problem with losing weight. And if you're still losing weight, if you're still having a problem losing weight or you're new to the diet, I would encourage you to get back to the basics and eat fresh meats and fresh vegetables and healthy oils. You stick to that and you will not go wrong. You will not go wrong. Stay out of the bread aisle. There's nothing in there for you. Just stay away from the sugar. Just put away artificial sweetener for a short period of time if you can. Some people don't like coffee without sweetener. Some people like coffee with sweetener. If you're having, some people can actually ingest artificial sugar and be just fine and their body is able to still release the weight. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. I had to give up the artificial sugar. You might be one of those people as well. And does it hurt to just give it up for a period of time until you reach your goal? What's more important, a sweet cup of coffee or a smaller size jeans? or ability to breathe better or to walk better, to have less pain. That to me means more to me than a cup of sweet coffee because I can reach my goal and I can always have a cup of sweet coffee anytime down the road, but I have to fight like hell to get there. So with that, I'm gonna close this video and I'm gonna ask if you enjoyed this video that you give me a big thumbs up, that you like and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more videos like this, as well as see the remainder of this series. I would like to share it with you, and I look forward to going shopping with you on Saturday. You have a great rest of your evening. Bye for now.